day, everybody. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. I know it's uh, been quite a while since I've uh, posted a video, a few weeks. Uh, I'm in, in the, the middle of this new semester, and uh, in addition to uh, the work that I do at the hospital and uh, all my teaching, I'm um, taking classes, and they're, they're, uh, a couple of them are hurting me uh, pretty bad right now. Uh, so a lot of my free time is going there, but I figured I'd do something real quick. Uh, this kind of helped me study. Um, in addition to helping me study, um, I'm, I might as well just uh, kind of show you guys some cool little animations here. So um, uh, I, I normally listen to music when I study, so I had to turn turn iTunes off. Um, so what I want to do is I want to show you some cool little animations here, and this just, just kind of helped me here. So this is actually... Um, a way of representing the active site of the acetylcholinesterase um, mole uh, molecule or enzyme, rather, and the 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 enzyme is involved in the it catalyzes the 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 breakdown of acetylcholine. Um, so what we have here is this is kind of the active the active site of the cholinesterase or acetylcholinesterase enzyme. And what it has is it has a lipophilic area here um, with these, these multiple aromatic rings. These are what we call benzene rings here. And you can see that these uh, phenylalanine, these are actually phenylalanine uh, molecules here. Um, the, these are also called aromatic rings because uh, some of the um, aromatic substances, well, a lot of the aromatic uh, substances from a chemistry context, have these benzene rings, and actually the benzene ring is just a very fundamentally important uh, molecule in biochemistry. Um, these these rings are very rich in um, pi, and even says right here in in pi electrons, um, and uh, that that makes sense because you have all of these electrons um, or uh, these carbon atoms bound together. And you have this electron uh, resonance structure here, so you have lots of electrons, um, and you have obviously pi uh, pi bonds. Um, if you're familiar with organic chemistry and uh, the difference between sigma and pi pi bonding, um, so you have lots of electrons here, uh, very lipophilic, um, non-charged, uh, non-polar um, area here, and then uh, down here. Okay, this is a more hydrophilic area, and you can see that I have um, a glutamate here. Um, I have a histidine, um, which is uh, an amino acid, and I have serine here. These are all uh, residues of, um, and you can see that I have um, a charge here, um, and hydrogen here with electron. Um, so this is this this, this area is more polar, so it's going to be more um, hydrophilic. Um, and, and the way that this area is set up is really nice uh, for when uh, an acetylcholine, okay, so here I have an acetylcholine uh, molecule. Um, I have the, um, the acetyl group here, okay, um, and I have the choline group here, um, nitrogen, and then I have these three um, uh, CH3 or methyl groups here. Um, and this is basically just acetic acid um, and a choline molecule uh, bound together here uh, through a little carbon bridge. Um, so what happens is as acetylcholine comes in, um, these, these rather non, kind of these nonpolar sites here are able to kind of interact um, with the, go figure, these nonpolar um, areas, these lipophilic areas, um, whereas this area here, the acetic acid, um, is attracted uh, to the uh, the histidine residue here, and so so what this does is this, this kind of holds the acetylcholine molecule in, and it kind of holds it in there, and, and allows um, a chemical reaction to occur. Um, so it just says once a natural substrate, um, so acetylcholine is a substrate, um, it's going to come in, it interacts with the enzyme. Okay, so you have hydrophobic interactions right here in the lipophilic area and you have this um, polarized ester function is attracted to the histidine residue that's this this oxygen here it's polarized it's attracted to this polar group here okay so now it's in and what's going to happen well 
Um, in addition to the methyl interactions, they're talking about the interactions here, the pi electrons, um, also attracts positively charged nitrogen atom, okay, right here through ionic interactions. These are intermolecular forces. Um, the concerted action between glutamate here, histidine here, and serine um, by a multiple electron transfer. So you have electrons um, are being transferred all around here, okay? And rearrangements is referred to as the electron-proton shuffle. So you kind of have a little dance going on here, a little electron-proton dance if you want to look at it. And what, what happens is there is a, a hydrolysis reaction that occurs, and it's able to hydrolyze this bond here, okay? And when that happens, um, you have that hydrolysis reaction, you now have your choline group and your um, uh, basically your acetic acid here um, have separated and you've now degraded this acetylcholine molecule down into its, its more fundamental um, components. Um, the reconstitution of active state of acetylcholinesterase is based on the relative inability, instability, excuse me, of acetylated serine residue which is hydrolyzed through water um, through nucleophilic attack on the carbonyl um, carbon atom. So basically what this is talking about here is this is kind of talking about water coming in and how this thing can reset. If I go back, you see what happened there. I have this and now I have um, water coming in. I have some shuffling and I'm kind of having some resetting occurring. Um, so this and this can, can kind of be released. Okay, so we go next. So here again is just uh, acetic acid. Here's a choline. It's a very fast reaction. It's stabilized by the serine residue. We knew that. Okay, you have the electron hydrogen transfers occurring. Um, the enzyme um, is activated again. It's able to release the acetic acid. You saw that water um, uh, come in. And then, of course, the choline gets um, released and uh, reabsorbed. Um, and that is how we can um, inactivate acetylcholine. Um, and now, if we go down here, Okay, um, this is kind of another little, uh, cool little little um, uh, diagram, if you will. Okay, so it's talking about um, irreversible acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. So now what we're talking about, we're talking about agents that look, or a agents that are able to act like acetylcholine. Okay, they're able to come in and they're able to bind here. Um, but instead of breaking down like acetylcholine, they just stay bound and um, they are able to inactivate the acetylcholinesterase enzyme. And that's the case with a class of substances known as the organic phosphorus um, nerve agents. Um, these include things like, oh, uh, like sarin, and, uh, uh, to uh, somin, um, and uh, different uh, uh, types of what we call a uh, G, uh, G nerve agents, V nerve agents, and um, another class of nerve agents known as the carbamates. Um, so this is actually a organic phosphorus agent, and you can see that I have uh, phosphorus here. Okay, um, double, uh, I have phosphorus, um, and then I have all these little carbons here, so that's what we call this organic phosphorus. Some people call it an organophosphate, but a phosphate is a phosphorus attached to uh, four, four oxygens. That's really what phosphate is. Um, you can see that this is, in fact, not attached to four, so I prefer the term organic phosphorus to organophosphate. Um, so this just talks about um, what happens here. You have a proton electron shuffle mechanism. It, it actually allows for a covalent bond to form between the phosphor atom here. Um, and, oh, this one, let me go back. That's too bad. Um, so let me let me restart this again here. Okay, so here I have my nerve agent coming in. Okay, these these uh, groups here, these methyl groups are attracted to the lipophilic area, and it's really this area right here um, that happens. And I want you to take pay kind of attention to this oxygen here. Okay, um, so I'm having electron proton shuffling occurring just pay attention to this area right here all right and then boom okay so I had um, what's called a leaving group uh, basically I broke the bond here 
okay and this bound here and now I have this molecule here that's just stuck right in here in the acetylcholinesterase um, um, active site um, or one of the active sites and what does that do well that prevents acetylcholine from being from moving in and being broken down so that this this allows acetylcholine to come in um, it allows acetylcholine to accumulate and then instead of being broken down the acetylcholine will then be able to continue binding to uh, nicotinic and muscarinic receptors and that's which what leads to the uh, the the classic signs and symptoms we see in uh, nerve agent poisoning um, or an organic uh, phosphorus um, insecticide poisoning um, the the what we call the cholinergic crisis the salivation the the the, the um, lacrimation the urination the defecation the gastrointestinal distress the emesis the uh, the respiratory and cardiac um, problems that are all associated with nerve agent toxicity um, is due to the fact that um, the acetylcholinesterase enzyme is, is bound, a co this is a covalent bond, so this is actually not an intramolecular force, this is covalently bound, um, uh, it, it activates this enzyme, acetylcholine is able to accumulate, and acetylcholine is, is able to um, basically unopposed, uh, have unopposed action upon uh, nicotinic and uh, muscarinic receptors or postganglionic nicotinic and muscarinic receptors. Okay, guys, I hope you found this video kind of interesting. Um, and again, I, I'm sorry I haven't uh, been putting a whole lot of videos up. It's just uh, been really having a tough time. Um, actually, the class that I'm doing a video on here, this is actually the, the easiest class that I have. Um, but there, there, there's another class that uh, it's a general toxicology course that's just... Um, it's all genetics and biochemistry, and it's it's really hurting me. So um, I've had to devote more time to that, unfortunately, at the cost of uh, not devoting as much time to YouTube. Anyway, I hope you guys found these, these uh, little uh, videos and these demonstrations helpful. And as always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.